You, the guy she told you not to worry about. My name is John of RatchetStrapMedia.com and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going over what my favorite lenses are for drifting photography. You know, over the years I bought a lot of gear. I have a lot of lenses currently and I'm constantly buying more. So there's a lot of circumstances where you're gonna use one lens way more than you use any other lens in your bag. Like for me, for example, I use this 70 to 200 often. Okay, this is a Tamron 70 to 200. It's not very big, but it's not very small either. It's kind of heavy, but at the same time, it's a lot, lot lighter than the lens that you'll be seeing later on in this video. But the one thing I like about it is it's internal zoom, so it does not get any longer. Like a lot of the times I'm shooting with this, this is a, a tripod gimbal head, so you could swivel this head and it'll swivel on its base. So as you're shooting, you can turn with it mounted on the gimbal and pan and do all that stuff and it makes for a much more stable shot. But if you have a lens that say extends as you zoom in, you know, this is just like a regular gimbal. You still have to balance this. There's balance adjustments on it. If you have it set here at the shortest focal length and you extend that zoom, well, it just got heavier so it's gonna move on you. So like you want this to be stationary when you let go of the camera. That is why I like this lens so much. You know, it's an EF mount. It has a 77 millimeter filter thread. It fits all of the filters that I currently have so I don't have to buy any more. My polarizers, all my ND filters, even any of my mist filters. Yeah, it, it, it's just a really good lens. I love this lens. It's way cheaper than the Canon lens. So it has vibration compensation or image stabilization, uh, all that stuff. So it, it's, just, it's just an awesome lens. So that lens is for, you know, far, further distances obviously because it's a 70 to 200 to zoom lens now I'll pull something in that I like to use for closer range things this is the Canon 24 to 105 f4 L another 77 millimeter filter thread this is a lens that I'm going to be using for a closer range it uh, goes from 24 to 105 millimeters but it is an external zoom so that gets annoying and the weight of this lens makes it come down on its own and that's kind of annoying. I don't really like it too much just because of that fact, but I do use it. I use it a lot in like the 80 to 85 millimeter range. At the normal track that I go to, there's a really nice like sweeping corner that you can get really cool slow shutter speed shots and I use this a lot in that area there. I also use this lens a lot for video, but it's a little heavy and my gimbal didn't really like balancing it too much. It did balance it, I was able to get it to happen, but it, it's just a little bit of a heavy lens, so I stick to this next one. This is my Canon 17-35 f2.8L. This is a very old lens. I found this, where did I find this? On some some used lens site, it might have been, actually I think I got this from B&H Photo. Obviously I got it used, but it was like, absurdly cheap, 200 something, I forget. I know I did a video on this already. Absurdly cheap, any, cheaper than anywhere I found because they said it had a small imperfection on the front element, but I, I, I have yet to see anything that's there and nothing shows up in the photos, but I use this solely for video. I mean, I do use it for photo and stuff too, but it gets a lot of use for video. It's just super wide. It gets a lot in the shot and it goes to 35 millimeters. I never had a lens that was super wide but also can zoom in so I, I wanted to pick something up like that also 77 millimeters it's an L lens so it's, it's superb quality fantastic super sharp this lens like I said it's for video primarily like I'll, I'll, I'll use this if I'm taking stills of cars sitting around the track or you know just regular automotive car shots or anywhere that I'm doing a shoot at this primarily gets used for video it's such a nice lens for video because I can be recording something, pause, zoom in to whatever I need to zoom into and then resume recording. And it's just, it just looks so good. I love this lens. Everything I've done so far in the past two months video wise has been with this lens. This lens is so fantastic. If you can get your hands on a 17 to 35, I absolutely hands down would do it. You know, don't sleep on the older EF mount lenses because they are still very relevant. All right, so my next lens is for that super telephoto stuff when I want to get all the way across track and be able to see the driver picking his nose in his car. This is my Sigma 150 to 600 F5 to 6.3. This is a Sigma Contemporary. This thing, let me just let me show you here. This lens is absurd. It is so 
long and it's so heavy, but it takes fantastic photos. I only have one filter for this lens because I believe it's a 95 millimeter. Uh, where are we? Yeah, it's a 95 millimeter filter thread. So they're expensive. So I currently only have one and it's an ND8 because that's primarily what I'm using. Um, if something's too bright, I'll just up the aperture to say F11 or something like that. But this lens is heavy and big, but it, the pictures are so nice on it. Again, it has optical stabilization. And my favorite thing about it, because this lens is so heavy, it has a lock. So now I can hold this thing upside down with my camera on it, whatever, and it does not extend. Look at how big it is. That's what she said. It's insane. It's almost, okay, maybe it's not the size of my head, but still, it's a massive lens. This thing weighs a lot, and um, that's why I got that gimbal mount that I showed you earlier, because I will, I'll put the lens shoe on the gimbal mount so that I can, you know, pan with the cars, this, because this thing is so heavy. You know, this is the contemporary version, so it's not, uh, it's not built like the sport version, but optically, they are identical. The sport's even bigger. It's like a hundred and some millimeter filter thread. <laughs> a lot of places that I'll stand, at the track when I go on the actual oval I'm able to follow the car throughout the entire track just by zooming the lens in but again this this falls into I hate external zooms and they because when I'm zooming it and it's getting bigger it's just getting more heavy and more heavy and it's just not fun it, it really starts to hurt your arm when I'm holding this I'll have my hand on my camera on my camera and I'm constantly turning this and holding the lens at the same time with the weight and it gets heavy <laughs> It really gets heavy. And my last favorite lens that I use for drifting is my 35 millimeter. It's currently on my camera. You're currently watching me through this. I don't use it as much anymore since I got my 17 to 35. It's really nice to have for video. Like for instance, right now, I want a prime lens. I don't want to have to fidget with making sure my I'm in the same spot in the zoom range as I was last video or the video before or whatever. So like if I'm recording shorts or I'm recording reels or something like that, and I'm going to do one after the other in the same setting, I don't want to have to fidget with that. It opens up to an aperture of 1.4. So it, it can let in a lot of light. And this was my uh, go-to lens for any type of low light shooting for a long time. I do a lot of video work with this lens. Like I said, not so much anymore because of my 17 to 35, but this lens is fantastic. It's a 67 millimeter filter thread, so I did have to buy other filters. I mean, I, I had some from an 85 millimeter that I used to use. Actually, hold that thought. So, oh my God. So this is my old workhorse of a lens. I used to use this constantly. This is a Mikey Me Mecky Me Mecca some Chinese lens, I have no idea, but I got it on Amazon last year or something. I've shot so many portraits, so many cars on this lens that it's paid for itself nine times by now. I think it was like 299, 250, something like that. But the photos that come out of this lens are so good and sharp. It's an F1.8. You could manually override the uh, focus whenever you want. So this is where the 67 millimeter filters come from. You know, it came with a lens hood. This used to be my go-to lens for shooting any up close racing stuff. Like it just takes such good pictures. Like I'm so impressed with this lens. I'm never going to get rid of it because it's really nice to have. All the, all the pictures, all the videos, anything I took with this thing, it's just sharp. The only problem is it sounds like a drill. So this is my, my Canon RP. I'm gonna take my other lens off of this. So here is the Mikey on this. So this is a really fantastic lens, but if you wanna use it for like what I'm doing right now, not, not good. Ready? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not good for video stuff, but it takes fantastic pictures. I'll tell you that. Ready one more time. Let's get, let's get it right up near the mic here. <laughs> so those are my favorite lenses for drifting, any automotive photography, any type of racing photography. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you use. What's your favorite lens for shooting at a distance? What's your favorite lens for shooting up close? What's your favorite video lens? Let me know down below. That's all I have for today's video. As always, my name is John of RatchetStrapMedia.com and I'll see you next time.